Hey guys, and welcome to The Power of Fight. Uh, so today I wanna make a video about how I first uh, knew about my tumor, how everything started. So uh, let's go back to 2013. Now in 2013, uh, I started a, med a medication called Accutane. Now Accutane is a medication for your skin to help with acne. I was on, uh, I was on it once before when I was uh, 15 and uh, it was incredible. It cleared my skin up. Uh, I've always struggled with acne and uh, something that's really like, uh, you know, will affect me like mentally. Um, I remember when I was a kid, I was very, very depressed. Uh, you know, every time I could be having a great day, you know, in school and then I look in a mirror, I remember actually, I remember an actual time I looked in the mirror with the trophy case and I saw my face and I instantly became depressed and was like shy and like, you know, kind of closed in. Uh, but after I went on Accutane, which which was a rough go, of course. I mean, Accutane does have a lot of side effects. Uh, it has been linked, which I don't know. I mean, it has been stories, I guess, of, uh, you know, suicide while on that because it does kind of bring you down, does make you a little depressed. But uh, the end results were fabulous from that uh, because when I went on that in high school and uh, suddenly, you know, when my face cleared, uh, everything changed. It was, I was able to come out of my shell. I was able to be my confident, you know, outgoing self. And, uh, it really, you know, made me enjoy, uh, school, uh, again, it really made me enjoy high school. You know, uh, I did not, no longer had that impediment where I'd look in the mirror and immediately my whole disposition or my attitude would be, you know, thrown down. So, uh, so fast forward then, uh, 2013, I'm back on this medication. Uh, my acne comes roaring back. So I go back on this and I notice this time I'm starting to have these really, really bad uh, headaches. Uh, headaches that felt like, you know, an ax was bearing itself into my head and then twisting back and forth. Uh, I mean, crippling headaches. I remember just, you know, like having to put my head down at the dinner table and just like, you know, bracing because uh, it was so painful. Uh, then I would also get these uh, a seam in my vision. It was like my vision was split apart by this like translucent seam that would kind of like curl the edges in of my, of, you know, my field of vision for that one seam. Uh, so it was kind of like, you know, when you're turning a page, like a page that has pictures on it, you kind of see the pictures folding in a little. That's kind of how it looked on, you know, that seam that went down my vision. And uh, so I should have gone off the medicine earlier, but I wanted my skin clear, so I stayed on it and I kind of downplayed the, the symptoms to my dermatologist. But it got to the point where the symptoms became so severe, uh, my mom had enough actually. Uh, we were walking into movies together. We used to go to the movies together every Friday uh, night after my dad passed away, that was our ritual. Uh, so we would always go together. I remember walking in with her and my left leg buckle and uh, like out of nowhere. And she's like, and, I, my, and my headache started and she was like, Danny, this is, this is it. You're telling your doctor what is actually going on. So I went to my dermatologist and I informed her about the headaches. And she said, Danny, what this sounds like is uh, there's something else going on. It doesn't sound like these are symptoms from Accutane at all. Uh, so I'm going to send you right to the emergency room to get a, a scan. Now, whenever you hear this, you know, stuff's uh, scary, you know, something's up. So I left the dermatologist. I went straight to the emergency room and at the emergency room, they gave me a CAT scan and, uh, they said, uh, this, this doctor comes in and he says, this is large, there's a large ball in your head. It's a large inflamed ball. It looks like a, a very large tumor. Uh, we want to keep you here and, uh, we might do emergency brain surgery tonight. Now I was taken aback. I was like, what? I mean, uh, two hours before my biggest concern was my acne, you know? And then all of a sudden I'm hearing that I may need emergency brain surgery. Well, needless to say, my mom wasn't having it and neither was I, uh, until we had a second opinion. So against the doctor's orders, uh, we did, I checked myself out. And my mom was totally cool with that. She agreed. So I checked myself out and the next day we went to a neurologist. Now, when the neurologist looked at my scan, he said, okay, rushing to brain surgery was a little extreme. He's like, you don't uh, need that. But what it looks like is, you know, you have a, a tumor in your head uh, that is really inflamed. 
Uh, and he said, we don't know how big it is because the inflammation is massive. And at that time it was like the size of an orange, he said. He said, but what we're going to do is I'm gonna uh, make an appointment with you for a neurosurgeon and I'm gonna prescribe you steroids. And the steroids should stop your, you know, your symptoms and take the swelling down. And I did, uh, the steroids worked, my symptoms immediately stopped and I went to the neurosurgeon. And the neurosurgeon looked at my exam and uh, he, he had me do another, uh, I, I forget if I did another exam at that time, I think I did. And they looked at it without the swelling and he said, well, Danny, uh, it doesn't look like there's anything cancerous in there. He said, just from looking at it, but um, maybe we do a biopsy, that's what I recommend. Now, I was against brain surgery at this time, big time, uh, you know, I was a writer, my brain was my tool, and uh, you know, I was very proud of, of what I could accomplish with by using my mind. So I was scared of anything affecting that. So I really didn't want that biopsy even. And he said, okay, what we could do is we can monitor it. Uh, what you do is you'll come back in uh, in, in a couple months and uh, we'll take another MRI. And he said, but let's stay on steroids. Uh, so I told him uh, I really didn't want to stay on steroids and I had another idea I wanted to try, uh, which was medical marijuana. Now, I've always been a big marijuana proponent. Uh, you know, I, I went, when my dad got prostate cancer, I pushed him to use it, but of course, you know, he was old school. He was born in 1938. He wasn't for that. Uh, so my dad was passed away at this time and uh, he passed away in 2008, but this was 2013. So I told my mom, I'm going to get my medical card and I'm going to use uh, cannabis oil. And I knew some great things about cannabis oil already in medical marijuana uh, because I've researched it. Uh, from the, my first time with marijuana, just to tell you a little quick uh, side story, I remember I was 15 years old and I never used it before because I was, I was scared of it. I was told all these horrible things about it. Uh, and, uh, my friends, you know, they, they, they partook and, uh, I told them, okay, I'm, I'm going to try it. And, uh, they all kind of got together and they organized a day for me and one of my other good best friends, cause he never tried it either. So we, we decided when we were going to leave school, we were going down to this field called the Vries, uh, which was a baseball field and it had some like grasslands around it. And we were going to smoke a blunt there. And I remember that experience which was it was magical like i just remember laughing and giggling and having the greatest time and thinking to myself man all this stuff that i was told about this was completely wrong i don't want to kill myself i don't want to commit suicide uh i just want to laugh and eat and uh, i remember we had some incredible conversations too like these you know in-depth abstract <laughs> conversations i was like this is amazing so i remember then we went to villa pizza uh, which was the greatest uh, pizza place, you know, high or not, uh, down on uh, Beekman Avenue in New York. And uh, they're no longer open, unfortunately, because I'm sure the health club closed them down a while ago. But I just remember eating the pizza and being like, wow, this is so, so good. So my, needless to say, my first experience in marijuana was wonderful. So I uh, uh, I wasn't afraid of it at all. And I, I looked at it as something that could really be used medicinally. And I started researching it. And especially when the whole medical marijuana push came through, you know, in like the, uh, the, in like the 2000s, I believe like the, like the early 2000s, I am mean, really diving in uh, to researching it. So when I decided to treat myself with that, I took myself off the steroids and I took cannabis oil. Now I knew cannabis had some great properties to it. I knew uh, there was a recent study out in Seth, uh, out in Seth Lab Laboratories in California back then that had uh, mice with cancerous tumors and they treated it with cannabis oil and they found that not only did the, the tumor shrink, uh, but it was actually effective in fighting the cancer because while radiation and chemotherapy killed both the good cells and the bad cells, the marijuana only targeted the bad cells. And there's four main properties to marijuana, which, you know, really opened my eyes was the first one, it's anti-proliferative. So it prevents cancer cells from reproducing. Now, mind you, at this time, I didn't know I had cancer, uh, but I knew all these great properties and I know what usually comes to the tumor. So I was trying to get on top of it. Uh, I knew the next one was an anti-angiogenic. So it prevented uh, the formation of new blood vessels by tumor growth. 
Uh, and then the next one is anti-metastatic. So if there was in fact cancer, uh, you know, uh, uh, this actually prevents the cancer from spreading. That's a big thing with cancer when it metastasizes, you know, that's what you really gotta worry about. And finally, it was something called apoptotic. Now apoptotic is what I just basically talked about is uh, it induces cancer cells to seek their own death, but it leaves the healthy cells alone. So that's opposed to like chemotherapy and things like that, which will we'll target both the good and bad cells. So at this time, I took myself off the of steroids and I did cannabis oil. For two years, I treated myself this way and I was symptom free. Uh, I remember going to the neurosurgeon and he looked at my exam and he's like, Danny, well, all the, the swelling is gone and what it looks like is there's just a ball in your head that you were probably born with that just became inflamed by the medicine you were on. So let's just keep monitoring it. So uh, this was fabulous news and I kept going that course. And uh, so this was how I first found out about the tumor in my head. It wasn't until two years later when my mom uh, got really sick that the stress really started to mount on me. I was the only person taking care of her. My mom was a very tough, stubborn woman. I loved her pieces, but uh, she's a tough woman. And uh, being the only person taking care of her uh, was hard on me. And suddenly my headaches came back. And I remember uh, I would go in for uh, brain scans, every MRI scans every six months. Uh, I had to go back. I couldn't even wait the full month. I had to go back in five months because my headaches came back and this time they were worse than ever. I remember I couldn't take a few steps without vomiting this time. And my vision was uh, that scene like magnified ten, tenfold. Uh, it's funny because at this time my symptoms were really bad, but they're nothing compared to what I experienced recently uh, with the stroke and everything like that. But so, that, so that's what happened. And then uh, when I went back in that five month period, they found that my tumor had tripled in size and became active with malignant tissue. And that is what prompted my first major brain surgery and in which the, the tumor in my head was the size of an orange. Uh, they were amazed I was even able to uh, function still with how large it was. I remember um, being laying down in the hospital bed and my sister looking up at the, the, the image uh, from the MRI and like was taken aback uh, of how large the tumor was. Uh, yeah, and so I'm not gonna keep this video too long. I just wanna make this video about how I identified it, but, um, and that is how I identified it. And then long story short, uh, after that brain surgery in 2015, that's when they discovered I had uh, stage uh, three glioma. And, uh, and that is when, you know, they prescribed me, uh, I did the radiation, uh, I did the chemo. At first they said I had around two to four years to live, which was terrifying and that, uh, you know, my days were essentially numbers, but I wouldn't accept that. Uh, I did, I continued doing cannabis oil. I switched my diet. Uh, I actually pulled myself off chemotherapy, which probably wasn't the smartest thing to do, but uh, I was feeling like hell. So I pulled myself off, but hey, uh, I was cancer-free for seven years after that. For seven years, I was cancer-free by just using a healthy diet, and medical marijuana, uh, uh, more uh, pointedly the Rick Simpson cannabis oil, which is um, a full spectrum of the marijuana plant. All right, guys, uh, thank you so much. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe, and feel free to comment as well. Um, yeah, all right, everyone, keep up the fight. Thank you.